Welcome to the Future Jam. Today we're talking the virtual future inspired by Ready Player One. If you don't know what Ready Player One is, where are you living? Are you under a rock? It's that new movie that just came out about being in a game. And no, trying to find not just any game, a virtual world. Oh, yeah. Well, I it's mean, not it's just a game. a game, Harrison. It's, it's not life. just a game. It's the Oasis. <laughs> and, yeah, it's it's an adventure trying to find the golden Easter egg. And you're going to be basically a zillionaire if you get it. And everyone's trying to get it, but only one will do. It, okay, real quick. Imagine it's Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> and the creator of this game world, Oasis, is Willy Wonka. And he's gone. He's gone to the wayside. He's old or wizzled or something. He's dead. I don't know. It's not a spoiler. (laughs) So imagine he's gone and he wants to leave this whole world, the Oasis, to somebody to to be a caretaker of. So he created a competition so people could compete together to try to, I guess rule the world (laughs) kind of well he didn't have friends or family he was just like a like a lone wolf kind of creator designer kind of guy and so basically it was he was trying to find his heir and then a bunch of action and whatnot and um and hijinks don't forget the hijinks the hijinks yeah of course um to basically win over these three keys that unlock this prize of ultimate wealth and power. The con- the full ultimate control of the world. Of course. Of course. And scene. Yeah. <laughs> so, the reason why we talk about this is because we want to do a quick little review and, and then get into our topic. Because guess what? This movie... It has a lot of inspiration in the real world as far as digital worlds go. There are some digital worlds being built right now, and we're going to get into that in just a quick minute. So with all that being said, we're going to do a quick little review sponsored by Cinemike. And if you don't know who Cinemike is, we're sitting with him. Hello. Michael, right here. He's got a little spinoff. You should check it out. If you like movies. So, Mike, what do you think about the movie? Putting me on the spot here, Harrison. But <laughs> as far as the movie goes, I, I I felt like it was a it was a it was a fun movie. Capital fun. Right? It was lots of fun uh scenes like uh it was adventurous, kinda like all Spielberg movies are. I, I he's he has a vast imagination and I like the way he like displays that on the screen like uh all the way back to indiana jones and all of his past movies he's always had a great sense of world building like he did a really good job at pulling you in immediately and there's a lot going on in this movie it's there's lots of high concepts to pull from the book to the movie and it's really difficult to translate that in such a short amount of time so what they did was they uh did the old tell not show. So they actually monologued a bunch of things in the beginning just to get the audience up to speed. Like the, the main character was talking directly to the audience, like explaining this and explaining that. And they had to do that because it's just such a complicated world that if they didn't, uh, you'd be lost. Right. Immediately right. lost. And that's the whole crux of this is, it's a high concept in entertainment piece. It's a very high concept movie. So that actually kind of leads into my point. I really like the movie, but I think they should have stretched it out into a trilogy. So from the trailer, you know that basically they have to collect three keys that unlock ultimate power and wealth. And I think they could have broke this up into three movies. And so a lot of these high concepts I feel like could have been fleshed out better exp- instead of just through exposition and like, you know, 
narrative and whatnot. It could have actually been fleshed out through showing, through a movie, if they stretched out into three movies. But I guess they just didn't have as much confidence in this. So, my review, if I were to put it out of 10, I'd actually give it a solid like 7.75. I really liked it. There's lots of references, Easter eggs within a game, or sorry, a movie about finding Easter eggs. So, uh, out of 10, what do you think you would give it? So, this is not a video game movie at all. It's a movie kind of about <laughs> video games. And it, this might be the best video game ish movie uh, around. I would say, I, I agree with you, score. I would say oh. 7.5 to a 7. Like I said, it's capital fun. There's not a lot of substance, though. So there's a lot of fun right. things, but it doesn't delve deeper than that. There's th- right. It doesn't, doesn't get into some of the more serious like connotations of the world. And it, yeah. And it, I think if they would have broken up the movie a little bit more, they could have done that. Cause there was a lot of potential. So yeah, I think this is probably the best video game movie or game about video games since wreck it Ralph. I would say <laughs> it's the best game about video games, about movie, about video games. Oh. that's ever been made about video game movies. I would say it's better than resident evil anyway. So moving on, yeah, let's let's just delve in a little bit of, real quick at the actual kind of interesting topics um, that the movie didn't cover, and I think it would be interesting to get into real quick. And this is a decimated world. This is Earth, uh, I guess, twenty years from now, right? Something like that. I think it was like two thousand fifty-seven or something, if I remember correctly. It opens up in this world, and it was Columbus, Ohio, and they said Columbus, Ohio is <laughs> the center point of the world. <laughs> Columbus, Ohio. No, it wasn't the center point of the world. It's just this guy's life who ends up being the hero. It seemed like they were trying to paint it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is, yeah, this is kind of my point. I wish they would have fleshed out the outer world a little bit more. The, the concept I was getting at is, in this world, it looks like everybody is poor. Everybody... It seems like people don't have a lot of worldly possessions. They have a lot of digital possessions. That's the thing. Yeah, they don't have a lot of worldly possessions, and they all look like they live in this terrible landscape of stacked uh, houses. They're not even houses. They're like trailers stacked upon each other. Freaking I-beams. Yeah, (laughs) it looks like a terrible life. Like people... It looks like a third world country. So why wouldn't you want to go into a digital world? That's that's the thing. So I guess the the world's gone to crap. The movie didn't. That's why I wish the movie would have covered this. Like, how did we get to this? What? How did we get to this point? And maybe it started from apathy. Maybe the game that as the world got worse, this virtual world. Or game, people started going further and further into it to avoid their real life. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Because why would you want to be in the real world when you could have the Millennium Falcon in this digital world? Or have the Bigfoot, you know, big old uh, truck or whatever it is. And for a fraction of the price. Yeah, and this, this movie paints it as... A good thing, kind of. I think the way the movie paints it is this virtual world, the Oasis. It's a good thing, and they don't they don't really put a lot of negativity around the world itself, which is kind of odd. They kind it of is. display it as like a good thing for humanity, and it, they don't really like dig at the core of why do we need this, and is it beneficial at all? Right. Well. And yeah, I would have loved it if they would have got into it. But I agree with that. That's the the weird thing. Now, I don't agree with the way they portrayed the world as far as, you know, people basically choosing one over the other. Like you could just tell that they were choosing the digital world over reality. Where I feel like in the future, most likely what would happen is people would be taking care of this world and be choosing the digital world so that 
we don't cause as much damage and and eco you know damage to this world so it almost would be an escape from causing more damage because we're only going to get more greedy <laughs> like humans we have an insatiable urge for more 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 and if we do it in the digital world at least it's not going to destroy the planet yeah but these these people are in it all day long in their living rooms and walking around their house they're in it all day long it, it's right. it's like it right. is their life in in this world there's not physical schools where kids go to all the schools and the movie didn't do a good job painting this but in the book all the schools are in this digital world oasis so the oasis has gotten so popular that the schools are digital and kids get go to class using vr gla- glasses mm-hmm. i'd like to liken that a little bit to um, kind of what we have now with kids staying home and doing online classes. Right, right. Um, I, I kind of picture that maybe in this world, teachers and and just the whole infrastructure has crumbled. And the only way to get good teachers is that then to have digital schools and and digital teachers. <laughs> Well, yeah, you wouldn't have to worry about school shootings if that's, if that's the case. No. But the other thing is, you know, you have a lot of charter schools, and one of the big issues with inner city schools is, okay, we have some bright gems in this, you know, inner city school. Well, now we have to figure out how we get them to the better school so they get a better education. Well, with these digital kind of worlds, you can connect these good teachers with these bright students very easily even if they're halfway across the world. So there's lots of benefits to this. I think they just, in this movie, show it as a more post-apocalyptic, kind of near-apocalyptic yeah. kind of scenario, which it doesn't have to be in reality. But they, they just display the Oasis in, in a positive light. And oh, and, yeah. and also in the books, uh, and we're not getting into spoilers, but how the world's built, it's kind of a built like a class system. So the main character... What's his name? I think it's Pavel. Pavel. I'm. Not, who cares? I think we're close. <laughs> Percival. Percival. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Good memory. Yeah. So the main character. So the main character, Percival, he comes from a very very poor background. His he doesn't have parents. Well, yeah, at one point he had parents, but geez, spoiler much? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and you learn that in the first five minutes. I, yeah, <laughs> basically, you learn that in the trailer, probably. <laughs> yeah. And he, it, in the movie, it shows he has, it seems like he has all access to everything. But in reality, in the book, book's reality, he's trapped on this one cruddy area in the game. True. So he's trapped there because he doesn't have the coin to move up to, like, play other, go to other worlds. Mm-hmm. So this whole system is built on, like, people who have more money get more experiences and can play more. So basically the whole economy of this world is set up to inspire you to make money for microtransactions. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> hey, all right, you gamers out there. Is this the kind of future you want? You thought you hated microtransactions. Now wait till you see what's coming next. Exactly. It's the whole world's based on like small purchases and everybody's afraid because if they die or like lose something, they lose actual coin in the game. Right. It almost seemed like a hardcore mode, like in Diablo 2. Um, you lose everything. Yeah. You lose it all. And um the other thing was they they also talked about basically a debtor's jail. Yeah. And basically this this company the the evil company of the movie they'll take you to their like prison basically it's the digital prison and you basically have to just mine coin for them to get yourself out of debt. Yeah, you buy you get all this uh debt trying to buy in-game items and like resurrect yourself and then you get and I guess it's kind of a uh you kind of look at it this way. Both corporations they're kind of painted the 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 oasis corporate the company that made the oasis it's kind of painted as a in a good light this other corporation that like lends to people is painted in bad light for good reason for good reason but the 
game company that made Oasis, though it's at pretty much every experience you can think of, they allowed this other company to come in and sell in their system. Mm-hmm. They allowed that. They they could have blocked that from happening, but they allowed it. Right, but they didn't want to be tyrants. So the other company basically was just one giant clan or one giant guild. You know, they were a corporate guild for all intents and purposes. Yeah, but the, both, it, it just shows corporate greed. Both of those uh, companies yeah. are very greedy. Like, Oasis, the Oasis itself, the, the movie paints the creator of Oasis as a savior, when in reality, his he had kind of lost it, and people behind the scenes were using his his world he created right, as right. a money making machine and people were taking advantage of what he created because people were addicted yeah. to this world. That's a good point. That's a good point. So I just see as corporate, like in our own world, as corporations get more powerful and government, our government gives corporations more and more leeway. This shows kind of a, the, a picture of what, Corp- what corporations could look like when they take advantage of consumers without government oversight. Because in the movie and the book, there's no sign of government. There's no sign of police. There's no sign of any of that. And the evil company basically is a hit. They they, they go out and, and do whatever they want. They can arrest people for not paying like their dues. They can... They they have free reign. Like the government's not big enough to stop them and quell them. Right, right. So I mean, yeah. As far as the governments go, it's like the government. Their job is to secure the borders and to protect the citizens. Yeah. First and foremost, there's other things that the government can do. But if the government isn't doing those two things, then why even have one? And yeah, at this point, and from from this movie, yeah, you're right. You know, it's like. They like straight up, you know, are arresting people and putting them into debtors' prisons, and like no one is like questioning it. It's like, oh, well, they're gone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, basically. Yeah, nobody questions it at all. And you don't see any police until towards the end. Yeah. And so, as far as like governments and, and political stuff go, the whole idea of capitalism and libertarianism in in that sense is the fact that the government is the has the monopoly on use of force. Yes. And corporations do not. And so that's where in this world corporations not only have the whole economic, you know, power structure, but they have that use of force. And that's where when you commingle anything with use of force, it is corrupted, okay? So you can only trust one source for that. Everyone else, you just need to chill. Yeah, it, it's just showing a kind of a broken world that you don't yeah. want to live in. But there's aspects of it that are really awesome. Yeah, if we take the best of those worlds and build it on some solid foundations, I think there could be some really uh, good stuff to to build from. Because the idea is kind of like the Matrix almost, oh, yeah. but more realistic Matrix. in a fact. But more realistic in a way that because it's it seems it's an attainable. It seems like the ideas in this movie are attainable someday, if not very soon. And mm-hmm. the the movie portrays like all sorts of awesome things. Like uh, we're we're just now getting into the VR revolution, virtual reality, and this movie basically is like the Matrix. If you ever seen the Matrix, you're plugged into a computer when you're in virtual reality, it's basically like you are in that world. You don't know a difference really. Yeah. Basically all your senses are completely covered up or being intercepted by speakers or a visor or, you know, like a treadmill or, you know, like little things on your hands and your body and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They're wearing a suit with haptic feedback. So you feel like every hit, every blow, you feel like movement you will feel warmth. You'll feel coldness. Right. It, it's a full sensory overload, basically. Yeah, it's basically one step below being directly 
like plugged you know, into plugged your in. brain, yeah, brain like wise. in the in the matrix. Yeah, and th- this this is attainable. And um, Harrison actually looked into some games that are kind of like starting out like this world, this idea. And there's lots of virtual reality games out there right now, even for PlayStation Four. So it's pretty attainable now for the standard person. You can go out and buy a virtual reality setup for under five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, there's a lot out there actually. You you'd be surprised. So you if you're if you saw this movie and you were like, "Whoa, that'd be really fun. That actually looks like something I would want to try out." Well, you may have actually heard of this thing called PlayStation Play- Home? Yeah. That's it. That's oh, it. Yeah, good. PlayStation Home. So turn on your old PS3 <laughs> that's in the closet collecting right. dust and boot it up. Install the PlayStation Home. Wait, I can't find it. <laughs> Where's that? Oh, it's gone. They pulled it. They pulled it. And and the, you know what? That's that's the thing. So PlayStation Home isn't a thing anymore. But that is one of the things that most people actually know about. Because it's now, so accessible, it was, it was free. It was free. What, what it was it, made what by was PlayStation. PlayStation. Yeah. Now what it was was basically a hub world. So in um, Ready Player One, they're in a hub world. They're going to shops. They're going to this. And going to that between games. Well. PlayStation Home was kind of supposed to be that kind of thing. You would create an avatar. It would be a third-person kind of camera view, and you would walk around, and there were some, like, mini games and whatnot in the hub world, and you could go chat with people, do little, like, text messages and and whatnot. There was a lot of similarities to Ready Player One. Well, you could even it closed sit, yeah. down. You could even sit in a little theater and watch a movie or oh, a right. video with somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could like you could like download for like a dollar or something like that a movie and, and just like literally friend. watch it like digitally. But it, it was weird because you could see seats in front of you, like virtual reality uh, seats and like the screen, and so it's like not full <laughs> screen experience. Right. It was really weird. So after PlayStation Home closed, there was actually a couple of games that popped up soon after. One of them actually being developed by the people that made PlayStation Home called Nebula Realms. Yeah. And there's a few other things um, out there as well. The one that I thought looked the best was called Tower Unite. And this is a PlayStation 4 free to download game. And it has a lot of those same elements as far as a hub world with a bunch of mini games connecting, a lot of multiplayer aspects and chat and you know social you know aspects and you can build your own crib you can like put right. posters on the wall buy a couch it's probably like two dollars <laughs> for a couch um you know well it says no micro transactions but uh, i don't know my how bad. They, yeah i don't know how that works it's like do you have to like just get in-game credit to like build up you know enough in-game credit to, to I don't know. play I don't know. it and find I haven't out played it yet yeah play it and find I out i need to dust off my playstation 4 but here's the thing If you've ever heard of a game called Second Life, that actually, I think, has the most parallels to this this movie, Ready Player One. Because not only does it have this hub world where you're out there being social and you're, you know, doing your in-game stuff, you're chatting with people, you have your avatar you create from the ground up, but it has all the creation tools and whatnot. You can make your, your wardrobe, you can make furniture you can make houses like all these others but there's also a real world economy that you can can translate into real u.s dollars and that's one thing that no other game has as far as that goes and it it's still quite popular it's been going since like basically i think 2000 13 maybe even earlier than it that. seems old. it seems older than that i think it is older than that i think I, I think it is i don't quote me on the on that date we're gonna quote you and it's gonna be on your tombstone <laughs> if you're wrong it's gonna say that on oh your my tombstone. Gosh, harrison he was wrong once yes <laughs> he was wrong once <laughs> i doubt it was only once but these sorts of games, even though they have aspects of VR, you can actually play Second Life with the Oculus Rift. It's not quite Ready Player One type of level yet, but it opens up all kinds of opportunities for 
taking that next step of kind of choosing these digital worlds over real worlds. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of ch- uh, chat rooms is kind of the start of this where people would get into chat rooms and just talk to strangers and just, you know, say uh, SNL or what is it? <laughs> Age, sex, location. Oh, A-G-L? <laughs> A-S-L. Okay. <laughs> What's your age? What is your gender? And where are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was the go to phrase back in the day on the chat <laughs> chats. Um, but yeah, this this kind of opens up and it it's starting to become less creepy and more and more normal. So with these VR headsets, I saw a video and this is this is actually a kind of interesting video and it kind of shows like how much of a community this is becoming. And it's kind of like Second Life uh, a little bit, where it's like a virtual reality where you can go in and you can be whatever you want. You could dress up as a robot, you could dress up as a an alien or as a lady, man, whatever. It lets you be whatever. And these they're just hanging out in a room, walking around, shooting pool, talking to, to each other in this virtual world, wearing VR goggles in their homes. And one of the guys, and I'll I'll probably share this video if I can find it. One of the guys has a seizure. Oh, no. And he falls over. His avatar falls over because the avatars mimic what you're doing in real life. And he fall, falls over and he's laying on the ground. And you can see his avatar like vibrating, like going through the convulsions right. of a seizure. And all the other characters in, in the room with him are coming over saying, Hey, buddy, are you okay? And they're like trying to figure out who can we contact to help this guy out, like, did they find someone to help him? Eventually, he came out of it, like, because uh, <laughs> you know seizures aren't forever. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He so might have he... bit down on his tongue hard or Aww, whatever, but yeah, it just showed like that's a possibility. A community, and most communities on the internet turn toxic pretty fast. Yeah, so. Yeah, these online communities, uh, they're growing. And uh, with the as VR gets better and better, I, th- I feel like people are going to gravitate to that because it's hard to meet people nowadays in this digital world we live in. It's harder and harder each day. People are staying at home watching Netflix. People are playing video games on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. Like People are not getting out... Right. People aren't going out and meeting. People. They're not even going outside because they're afraid of carbs. So there's got to be another way of meeting people, and I think this might be it. Yeah. It's, so I, I think Ready Player One shows a possible future, and it's and it's actually not too far out of the, the imagination that that could be, you know, coming down the tube soon, and it might actually be here sooner than you might think. There's yeah. already suits where you can wear them and get feedback of what you're doing on the internet there's already weird there's already weird sex (laughs) attachments you can get (laughs) on your body and we're not going to even get into that we didn't even get in that but they also have the treadmills too like they were running around on in in the movie yeah so we're in the early stages and i would like to think that we're not going to let it get as far as they did in the movie where the whole regular world is crap, and the only way to experience good life is on the Oasis. I hope we don't ever get there, because that would be a scary, scary world to live in. I agree. I agree. I think if we move into that direction for any other reason than to do as little harm to our Earth as possible... It would probably be a bad move. Um, I think we have to take care of this earth, number one. And then we can use a digital system and video game and technology to go deep into like an oasis kind of system to minimize our impact on the earth while also being able to, you know, fulfill those greedy cravings that humans naturally have. So it would be a good marriage of two worlds if we were to implement this. I think it's inevitable. If you've listened to our episode about simulation theory, I think it's definitely inevitable. If you haven't listened to that, you should listen to it. 
Yeah, just think how fast the internet caught on. This is basically the internet 3.0, 2.0, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's it's a more in depth way of experiencing content, experiencing other people, and you know, just it, it it's it's a whole another level. Definitely. Um, just so, like I say yeah. that video games are better than books, I think this experience is better than video games. So that is a high seal of approval from me. How can something that doesn't even really exist yet and is also a video game, <laughs> how can that be better than itself? The only thing better than a video game is a video game. Is a better video game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll close out on that one. You can find us at the Future Jam on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Join the conversation on our Facebook community uh, discourse page, and you can call us at five one three Bot Cola. We're taking any callers now. We're so desperate. <laughs> well, We're get your mom so to call. Lonely. Get your mom to call. <laughs> Have her leave a, a really nice voicemail, like a very proper one. Yes. I would really enjoy to hear all mothers call in. We just want mothers this week. All right. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Good year. Thank you.